Live from the Governor's Reception Room inside the New York State Capitol in Albany, this is the 2011 inaugural ceremony featuring the swearing-in of the state's 56th Governor, Andrew M. Cuomo, Lieutenant Governor Robert J. Duffy, Comptroller Thomas B. DiNapoli, and Attorney General Eric T. Schneiderman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2011 New York State Inaugural. I now present to you the Attorney General of the State of New York, Eric T. Schneiderman, accompanied by his daughter, Catherine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Comptroller of the State of New York, Thomas P. DiNapoli. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York, Robert J. Duffy, accompanied by the Duffy family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Governor of the State of New York, Andrew M. Cuomo, accompanied by the Cuomo family. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the chairman of today's proceedings, the Honorable Gerald D. Jennings, Mayor of the City of Albany. Thank you all for joining us today. Please be seated. On behalf of the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, State Controller, and Attorney General, I welcome all of you and formally convene today's inaugural proceedings. I would like to acknowledge several honored guests who join us today. First, Governor David Patterson. <laughs> also here today, former Governor Mario Cuomo and former First Lady Matilda Cuomo. Also here, the Honorable Jonathan Lipman, Chief Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals. I would also like to acknowledge the legislative leaders who are with us today. First, Senator Dean Skelos. Dean. Here today on behalf of Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver, Assemblyman Ron Canestrari. Also joining us is Senator John Sampson. I would also like to acknowledge Assemblyman Brian Kolb. Now I ask that you please rise and remain standing for the posting of the national and state colors by members of the New York Army National Guard, followed by the invocation the Pledge of Allegiance, and the singing of the National Anthem. <clears throat> will be, now be given by His Excellency Howard Hubber, Bishop of Albany.
Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, we ask your blessing upon our newly elected statewide officials, Governor Andrew Cuomo, Lieutenant Governor Robert Duffy, Controller Thomas Dinopoli, and Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. Already, they have a proven track record of public service in various capacities, which has prepared them well to address the complex and perplexing challenges confronting the family of New York in this, the most difficult economic crisis since the Great Depression. May they exercise their sacred public trust with vision, wisdom, courage, prudence, integrity, civility, humility, practicality, and sensitivity, especially on behalf of the poor, the vulnerable, the powerless, and the voiceless. May they also receive respect, cooperation, support, and constructive input from other elected officials and from the citizens of our great empire state. For all this we pray, O God, in your sacred name, you who live and reign both now and forever and ever, amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Bronze Star with Valor Awardee, Command Sergeant Major James Meltz of the New York Army National Guard. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as the national anthem is sung by the Albany High School Albanettes. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to ask Chief Judge Jonathan Lippman to step forward and administer the oath of office to Eric T. Schneiderman as Attorney General of the State of New York. Schneiderman. I, Eric T. Schneiderman. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. 
that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. The Office of Attorney General of the State of New York. The Office of Attorney General of the State of New York. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Chief Judge Lippin will now administer the oath of office to Thomas P. DiNapoli as Comptroller of the State of New York. P. DiNapoli. I, Thomas P. DiNapoli. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of. The Office of Controller of the State of New York. The Office of Controller of the state of New York. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> At this time, Chief Judge Lippman will administer the oath of office to Robert J. Duffy as Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. J. Duffy. I, Robert J. Duffy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. The Office of Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. The Office of Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> It is my honor to present to you the Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York, Robert Duffy. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to start, first of all, by thanking my family, my father, my two brothers, my entire family, and especially my beautiful wife, Barbara, and my two daughters for their unwavering support. Uh, I could not do what I do uh, without the support of my families and friends, and they've just been invaluable, so I thank them all. I would like to also congratulate our two new colleagues, our new controller and our attorney general, and all the elected officials who are here. I thank you all for coming and, and wish you all the best. I would like to thank the city of Rochester 
uh, a city which I've had the pleasure of serving for over three decades, a city that I love, people that I love. I want to thank them for all the support they've given me throughout my career in making this day possible. I want to especially thank our new governor, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Uh, I would not be here today without Governor Cuomo. I want to thank the governor for his faith, his trust, his confidence, his friendship. And it is an absolute honor and a privilege to join our governor's team. And I, I pledge to the governor today and everyone here, I will never breach that faith and trust that he has placed in me. So, Governor, I thank you. I would like to also uh, go on and, and, first of all, thank the citizens of the state of New York and all the voters who made this possible. We would not be here without your faith and trust and confidence. For that, I thank you. Today is a new year, and it's also a new day in the state of New York. Uh, we have a new governor coming in, facing the economic realities of a $10 billion budget gap, but most importantly, the reality is that leading a state where we have to do what every family across the state has to do. They have to live within their means, they have to spend less money, and pull together during these tough times, and pull together as a team. That is the greatest charge that anyone can give to our state. As a chief of police, as a mayor, having served almost 34 years in Rochester, what my job did more than anything was put me in a close alignment with people. I've been in streets and neighborhoods and homes of families that cannot afford the high cost of government. They have a hard enough time putting bread on their tables and cannot afford the cost of government which forces them to make terrible life decisions. They depend on us. They depend on us. They depend on us to make the decisions that we have to make. And to have Governor Cuomo stepping in, I could not think of a better leader to come in during these times. During that, that 30 years of service that I've had, one thing that has struck with me is that we, as I walk through and, and walk out of my of the office today, of, uh, yesterday of, for the mayor and step into this office, is that people depend so incredibly uh, on us every day. And I just uh, ask that every day for the employees of the state that we pull together and we work every single day to support those people. I know in my heart that the person who is in the best position to lead this state is Andrew Cuomo. Uh, I've walked away from a job in a city that I love to join a man who I have complete faith and confidence in. A lot of people in this room have done the same thing. We're at a point in time in our state's history. We need leadership, we need bold leadership, we need teamwork, we need everybody to pull together to get us through these times. And I could not think of a better man to serve than our next governor. What I'm going to ask is one last thing as I close. I'm asked all the time, what is the job of lieutenant governor? And I'll be very clear what that job is. The job of lieutenant governor is to get up every single day and to do everything in my power to support Governor Cuomo and support Governor Cuomo implementing the changes that he is going to bring to our state. That is one, first and foremost, for my job. It's also the job of everybody in this room and in this state to pull together behind our governor during these times and come back and make our state proud and make the people who populate our state from the shores of Long Island to the shores of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario to make them proud of the leadership and the results that we will provide. And we will do that if we support our governor. In closing, I would just like to thank you for this honor. I want to, again, thank Governor Cuomo for what he has done for me, the opportunity that he has provided for me today and in the future. I want to thank all of you for being here today. And in closing, I just would like to say, first of all, God bless Governor Cuomo, and God bless him with the strength and courage to lead this state in the future. God bless all of you, and God bless the people of the great state of New York. Thank you so much.
this time, Chief Judge Lipman will administer the oath of office to Andrew M. Cuomo as governor of the state of New York. Cuomo. I, Andrew M. Cuomo, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New York, and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Governor of the State of New York the office of governor of the state of New York. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. gentlemen, it is my extreme honor to present to you the 56th Governor of the State of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Well, thank you and good afternoon to all of you. First, let me begin by thanking the people of the State of New York for this tremendous honor. I am humbled to be their public servant, and I will honor their trust and their confidence every day. Thank you. Let's all thank Chief Judge Lipman for a great job. Thank you very much, Chief Judge. Thanks to Lieutenant Governor Bob Duffy. He's going to be the second best Lieutenant Governor in the history of the state of New York. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Bob Duffy and his family, Barbara. <laughs> to all of my colleagues, Controller Tom DiNapoli, congratulations, Tom DiNapoli, on a great job. <laughs> Our new Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, congratulations. Bill Clinton once said the Attorney General's job was the best job he ever had. And he had a number of jobs. Congratulations, Eric Schneiderman. <laughs> to Senator Dean Skelos, thank you very much for being with us today. Senator Skelos, thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Senator Sampson, thank you for being with us, John. Majority Leader Canestrari, thank you very much for being here. <laughs> Regards to Speaker Silver, who couldn't be with us today because of a religious uh, observance, and to Minority Leader Brian Kolb, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. <laughs> Special thank you to Jerry Jennings. Didn't he do a great job as a master of ceremony? A really great mayor, Jerry Jennings. To a man who governed this state at what will go down as one of the most difficult periods of time in the history of this state. I believe that, that, that he became captain of the ship just when the ship was heading into a storm. 
And he warned us about the storm, and he, he brought us through the storm. He's done 25 years of public service. Uh, he's a personal friend of mine and to many people in this room. Let's give a big round of applause to Governor David Patterson. Thank you, Governor David Patterson. Stand up, Governor David Patterson. Stand up. He has been introduced, but I would be remiss if I did not uh, acknowledge and point out and thank the 52nd governor of the state of New York, one of the greatest governors in the history of the state, a man who has taught us all very much in this room and who has taught me everything I know, Governor Mario Cuomo and First Lady Matilda Cuomo. To all of my family, I have so many family members here today. If I start to point them out, I'll miss someone and there'll be a whole family disturbance come the next <laughs> holiday time. Uh, but to Sandy and my three girls, one quick story about the three girls I was reminded of this morning. Election day, we're going to go down to election night headquarters and it looks good and looks like we may win and I want them to feel like they're part of this victory. So I said to them, you know, I don't think I could have done this without you. And Kyra and Mariah, the older two, said, oh, it's nice, Dad, but it's not true. You know, you did it on your own, and we respect you for saying it, but uh, it's not true, but it's nice. The little one, Michaela, says, well, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> First, I did a lot more events with Dad because <laughs> the other two were at school. And I did all those introductions. And I really think I went, I went a long way to soften his image. So. <laughs> so. I'm not that soft. <laughs> so to the co-governor, thank you. And thank all of you. Thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for being here, for helping me be here, for all the work. The people who worked in the Attorney General's office, I believe the best talented staff ever assembled in the Attorney General's office. You did magnificent work for the public. Uh, thank you all. This is an austere setting, uh, and it should be, in my opinion. Uh, no grand celebrations. Uh, there's a lot of disappointment vis-a-vis -vis the government. There's a lot of suffering from the economy. And I don't think a grand ceremony or a lavish ceremony would be appropriate. In my administration, this is going to be the way it works. When we actually do something and perform and help the people of the state of New York and we make government function, then we're going to have a big party and celebrate and not before. I also... During this campaign, Bob and I had the opportunity to visit all 62 counties once again. And doing it in a relatively compressed period of time, it just, it, it's such a beautiful reminder of the assets that we have in this state, from, from the beautiful falls of Niagara to the powerful waves of Montauk. We have it all and everything in between. We really have every asset that man or God could be expected to give to a place. That is the state of New York. And I saw that up close and personal. I also saw up close and personal the suffering that our people are facing and the devastating toll that this economy has taken. And it cannot be underestimated. Young people all across upstate New York who are leaving because they believe there's no economic future left. The taxpayers on Long Island who are imprisoned in their homes because they can't afford to pay the property taxes anymore. 
but the value of the home has dropped so low that they can't afford to sell the house because they can't pay off the mortgage. The laid off construction worker in Brooklyn who can't find a job and is fretting about what he's going to do to feed his family when the unemployment insurance, insurance runs out. This, my friends, cannot be underestimated. And to make it actually worse, people then feel betrayed by their government. That they had problems, they had needs, they looked to the government, and they assumed the government was going to be there to help them because that's what government was supposed to be all about. And they look to the government, and instead they find a government that is part of the problem rather than being part of the solution. People all across the state, when you mention state government, literally shaking their heads. Worse than no confidence, what they're saying is no trust. The words, quote unquote, government in Albany have become a national punchline, and the joke is on us. Too often, government responds to the whispers of the lobbyists before the cries of the people. Our people feel abandoned by government, betrayed and isolated, and they are right. New York faces a deficit, the deficit that we talk about all day long, the budget deficit, the budget deficit. But it's actually worse. The state faces a budget deficit and a competence deficit and an integrity deficit and a trust deficit. And those are the obstacles we really face. And the state is at a crossroads. I believe the decisions we make, the decisions my colleagues make this year will define the trajectory of this state for years to come. The decisions we make today will shape the state we leave our children tomorrow. As governor, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do because I told you what I'm going to do. I told the people all across this state this was a different kind of campaign. Bob and I put together a very specific agenda. And we said we wanted to win, not just with a personal mandate. This was not about electing Andrew Cuomo and Bob Duffy. This was electing a mandate for change that the people of this state endorsed overwhelmingly all across this state. We have a very specific mandate for change that the people want. And our expectation is that the politicians and the elected officials of people are now going to do what the people voted for and what the po people need. It starts with jobs, 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 getting the economy running once again, getting the economy running all across this great state. Number two is going to be cleaning up Albany and restoring trust because Bob is right, you have nothing without trust. Any relationship is only as good as the level of trust, and we have lost the trust. And we're not going to get it back until we clean up Albany, and there's real transparency, and real disclosure, and real accountability, and real ethics, and real ethics enforcement. That's what the people have voted for. That's what the people deserve. We have to pass a property tax cap in the state of New York because working families can't afford to pay the ever-increasing tax burden. Nothing is going up in their lives. Their income isn't going up. Their bank account isn't going up. Their savings aren't going up. They can't afford never-ending tax increases in the state of New York, and this state has no future if it is going to be the tax capital of the nation. We have to send that signal this session by passing a property tax cap. <laughs> and my friends, we must right-size the state government for today. The state government has grown too large. We can't afford it. The number of local governments have grown too large. And that we're going to have to reduce and consolidate. We know what needs to be done. We have known, in truth, what needs to be done for many, many years. What we have to do this time is we actually have to do it. We actually have to deliver for the people of the state of New York. 
In a few days in the state of the state, I'll be providing and presenting an emergency financial reinvention plan, which will lay out all the specifics, a blueprint for change, a blueprint for action. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not underestimating the severity or difficulty of the task that we are about to undertake. My gray hairs are multiplying just thinking about what we have to do. We will be taking on powerful interests and long entrenched patterns of behavior. And change is very, very hard. Change is hard individually in our own lives. Change is especially hard in a collective. And to get this government to change, to get this body to change after all the years and after all the attempts and after people are so set in their ways, it's going to be difficult. But I believe we can do it. First, we have to start with a new attitude. That reflects a new reality. We need to correct decades of decline and billions of dollars in overspending. The people's interests who have ruled our, the special interests who have ruled our government for years must give way to the people's agenda. There is no more time to waste. It is a time for deeds, not words, and results, not rhetoric. It is time for a bold agenda and immediate action. There is no more waiting for tomorrow and there are no more baby steps, my friends. My attitude will be constructive impatience with the status quo of Albany. We need change and we need it now. Second, we need a new partnership. To the state legislators, I say, I reach out to you to form a new partnership. Because in truth, the partnership between the executive and the legislature has not been working well for years. And that must change. I respect the electoral responsibility of the legislators. I respect the constitutional independence of the legislature. But I also know that success will require a different approach. We must accomplish more, faster, smarter, and better than we have in decades. We have no more time to dally. Rather than seeking the apparent safety of the lowest common denominator, we must strive to reach the highest possible goal. We must realize that achieving political consensus in a political conference is different than providing governmental leadership for the people of the state of New York. To my Republican colleagues, I say I will not govern in a partisan way. And my administration will not be a partisan administration. I was not a partisan attorney general. I did not run a partisan campaign. I don't believe the Democrats or the Republicans alone created the problems we face today. And I don't believe the Democrats or Republicans alone will be able to solve the problems we face today. I believe we're going to have to do it and do it together. President Lincoln said in this city on his way to his inauguration, quote, citizens may swear allegiance to one party or the other and believe with all their might that they are right but once an election is passed, and until the next election, they should be one people. President Lincoln's words are profound. We are not first Democrats, Republicans, or Independents. We are first New Yorkers, and we must act that way. Today, Today, I extend my hand in partnership across the aisle to my Republican colleagues so we may take the first step immediately. And third, and most importantly, in my opinion, we need the people of the state of New York to be part of this effort. A governor's inherent power is limited. A governor's potential power is limitless. The potential power of the governor is to mobilize the people of the state of New York. And that is the real power of being governor. Only the people's voice can silence the calls of the special interests in the halls of the Capitol. I will lift the veil of secrecy that now surrounds Albany, and I will communicate in every way I can, ways never used before. But I need the people to join in. 
I said in my campaign, this effort is not going to be about me, but we. We the people form the government. We the people must reform the government, and that's going to have to start today. And this is going to be a dramatic shift for Albany. I was walking in the hallways of this Capitol a few months ago, and I was a few steps behind a mother and apparently her daughter. And they were walking through the hallways, and the daughter was obviously taken with the majesty of the building. And the daughter turned to her mother and said, Mom, where are all the people? And the mother said, uh, the people are working. They're in the offices. They're in the offices. Because the halls were fairly empty. And the girl said, but doesn't anyone come to visit? It is so beautiful and it is so important. It is so beautiful and it is so important. And I thought to myself, out of the mouths of babe, babes, where are the people? Where are the people in Albany? Where are the people in the capital? That is the profound absence in this system. The people aren't engaged. And that's what's going to have to change. If there is a silver bullet in the battle to recapture Albany, it is the re-engagement of our citizens. This capital has become a physical metaphor for the isolation and alienation of our people. In the name of heightened security, they have erected barriers and barricades all around this capital. To get into this capital is now like running an obstacle course, and it shouldn't be. People refer to the capital as a fort or as a bunker. It is anything but. This is a beautiful monument to democracy, this building. This is the people's meeting place, and they should be invited in. And today, my friends, we will reopen the Capitol, literally and figuratively. We will remove the barriers on State Street so the tour buses can return once again. We will be opening up the second floor, the governor's floor, so the members of the public will once again have access to their government. It is a <laughs> It is a symbol of a new approach to reconnect with people, to build back trust to defeat the power of the special interests with the power of the people. And my friends, look at this capital that you are in today. I'm sure you noticed on the way in, notice on the way out, look at the magnificent building that they built. Look at this room, the governor's reception room, the war room, 25 hand-painted murals by William de Leftwich Dodge. Look at the granite and the marble, the carved mahogany, the carved oak in this building, the million-dollar staircase, the most expensive building to build at the time, $25 million. It took them 30 years. Look at the statement that they were making. Look at the commitment. Look at the resources. They could have built a building in one-tenth the time, with one-tenth the expense and one-tenth the effort. That's not what they wanted. They wanted to make a statement when they built this institution of government. They wanted to say, we believe in government. We respect government. We're committed to government. We want the government to succeed. Why? Because they believed when the government succeeds, they succeed. Because the government is them. It is not an alien force. It is the organizing force for people. And if the government is successful at organizing and mobilizing, then society is going to be successful. So they invested in the government, and it was theirs, and they were proud of it. That's what this building is all about. That's what the Court of Appeals is all about, people believing in the institutions of New York State, and believing in themselves, and believing in the state, and investing in that belief. I first came to this building, I was in my 20s, very early 20s. 
And at that time, I had the good fortune to watch some truly extraordinary public servants. My father, Governor Mario Cuomo, who was Lieutenant Governor at that time, Governor UL Carey, Mr. Fink, Mr. Stanley Fink, Mr. Warren Anderson, different people from different parts of the state with different cultures and different accents, but they were beautiful to watch. They were people of honor and people of talent. It was always about principle. It was always about serving the people, and they always got the job done. And they made this government work in a way that made this state a better state. And I was inspired just watching them. And I remember sitting there watching them saying, you know what, maybe one day I could do this. Maybe one day I could be in public service. Maybe one day I could help my community, I could help my state. Maybe one day I could be in this place of honor. That's what this capital represents to me and, and so many others. That, my friends, is what I want to recapture. I want to rebuild this government, rebuild it by bringing back competence, rebuild it by bringing back integrity, rebuild it by bringing back performance, by bringing back people of talent, by bringing back people of goodwill, rebuild it by bringing back professionalism and respect and decorum and protocol and collegiality and partnership with the legislature and product for the people of the state rebuild the government to be what this government was and what this government needs to be once again. That's what this administration is going to be all about. Restoring the pride. Making the government work, my friends, so people once again trust the government and trust the institution, so that people once again believe in government, in themselves, and in this state. And that's what this is all going to be about. Rebuild the government, restore competence, restore trust, get the people of this state believing once again. Believe in government, believe in themselves, believe in each other, believe in our future, believe in our potential, believe that we can fulfill this dream of New York and that we're going to make this state, the Empire State, greater than it's ever been before. At the end of the day, what this is all about is making this state a better state for the 19 million people who live here. I have my three best beautiful reasons with me today, my three children. And as a parent, as a citizen, the fundamental obligation is to leave them a home that is better, sweeter, fairer, stronger than the home that we had. And their home is the state of New York. And their home is going to stay the state of New York. Let's go forward. Let's go forward together as New Yorkers, a people of goodwill. And let's not just rebuild this New York. Let's make this New York bigger and stronger and better and sweeter than it has ever been before. That is our challenge. That is our destiny. That is our legacy. And that is what we launch today. Thank you for being with us. God bless you.
Thank you, everyone. Please, please once again welcome our great students from Albany High School, the Albany High School Albanettes. Spent a few years at Albany High School, and I can tell you this is as talented as a group as I've ever heard. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> now, if everyone would please rise for the closing benediction, which will be delivered by Reverend Franklin Florence from the Central Church of Christ in Rochester. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you today for the privilege of living in a land where we are yet able to elect our leaders to accept the responsibility to lead and govern the great people of this state. We ask your abiding blessings to rest upon the families of Governor-elect Cuomo and Lieutenant Governor Robert Duffy. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you and be merciful unto you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you. And in this troubled world, may he grant all of us peace. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Reverend. This concludes today's inaugural. Thank you all for coming. These proceedings are adjourned. God bless America. God bless New York State. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the day. Thank you.